Thomas Keller's restaurants, the French Laundry and Per Se, have transformed American oak cuisine. He is the only American-born chef to have two restaurants simultaneously earn the highest Michelin rating, three stars. He is also the author of four cookbooks, the latest of which is Ad Hoc at Home from Artisan Books. It's a great pleasure to welcome him back to our show. Hi. Oh, thank you, Leonard. It's great to be here. Now, this is your fourth cookbook after the French Laundry cookbook, Bouchon, and Under Pressure, uh, uh, that one about the practice of sous vide cooking, which has been somewhat controversial in New York City. Oh, it it, it has. Under Pressure was written for the professional um, from from the point of view of our restaurants, French Laundry, and per se. What I mean by that is we do a la minute cooking using the sous vide technology, where sous vide traditionally has been used in preparing food for extended shelf life. Uh, this we cook it more more at the moment as you would in, 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 a, in an a la carte restaurant. Well, uh, every chef I've spoken to has said, well, if you cook correctly, there shouldn't be any problem. And most people who wouldn't cook correctly wouldn't be using sous vide anyway. Well, that's correct. Uh, but the, the New York City Health Department, was we've worked close, closely with them, developed a HACCP plan for a restaurant, one, one that they have adopted for the criteria of approving restaurants to, uh, to, that are allowed to use sous vide cooking. Of course, we're one of those restaurants that have been approved by the New York City Health Department to use sous vide cooking. Do you see your books as being something of a record of the food that you've served at your various restaurants over the years? Well, ex- exactly, and I think I think a lot of cookbooks are that. It's cer- certainly, the French Laundry is that. It's 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 a it's a block of time in the history of the French Laundry uh, when we produced that cookbook. Uh, of course, food evolves, and our food has evolved greatly in the past ten years since that book was written. And uh, and can I get any of the same dishes if I go to the French Laundry now? If I could get in anyway? Oh, certainly yeah, you could get in, and certainly you can get some of the same dishes. Uh, you know, the coronets in there, some of the some of the classic uh, recipes and, and preparations from the French Laundry: the oysters and pearls, the the panna cotta. Um, uh, the coffee and donuts for dessert. There, there's lot, many, many dishes in there that are still represented at the French Laundry. But even those have evolved over time. Beet and leek is a lobster recipe that I was doing uh, when I had my restaurant here, right up the street at Raquel. Uh, and, of course, I've been doing it ever since, and it's evolved. And still, um, in, in the French Laundry cookbook, it, it, it's there, but it's evolved since then. Day. Do you keep those uh, on the menu because you just love them or because if you take them off, your customers are going to start complaining? Well, the menus at, at French Laundry and Per Se change every day. Uh, so in the case of, of of the menu, there's only one lobster dish or one crustacean dish, really, because sometimes we'll even change the type of crustacean. They so reflect the changes in the market each the day? Change in the, yeah, and exactly, the change in the market, the change of the year, the time of the year. So beet and leek may come on the menus uh, at, at specific times, but they're not all, it's not always there. Uh, it's interesting to note that you haven't written a Per Se cookbook. Not not yet. <laughs> well, one reason I haven't, it would be, you know, again, it's a, it, it would be an evolution of the French Laundry because the food and the culture and the philosophy of the French Laundry is so uh, relevant, relevant at, at Per Se as well. Well, Per Se is a wonderfully evocative name. And then this book is named after Ad Hoc, uh, also an evocative name. This is a, a family-style restaurant in Yonville, California. Is it called Ad Hoc because it was meant to be temporary? Exactly. Um, when uh, when we purchased the property uh, three and a half years ago, we had really no intention of opening another restaurant. The property that we purchased for for other reasons came with a restaurant. So there in lies what the, the heck. The, the, well, yes. Yeah, so what are we going to do with it? We have a restaurant. It's 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 practically brand new. We have to open something, and we weren't really. I wasn't really prepared from a from a conceptual point of view um, to do the hamburger restaurant, which I've been trying to do for the past 16 years. Uh, so we, we put in a, the family-style restaurant, which, which seemed to be very simple, something that we were able to execute pretty quickly in, in both in concept and format, and opened in, in, in five and a half months with a very minimal investment. And it became so popular that um, it was difficult to close. So a family-style restaurant means that you put a plate in the middle of the table and people dig in for themselves. Well, I- exactly. You know, they engage they engage in the, in the service themselves, not only with the food but with the wine, with all the beverages, but also because there 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 again is only one one menu. There are no choices, uh, so it's a four course menu um, where you come in and and you just sit down and, and you eat. So we've taken away the anxiety of having to order something, um, but also because it is you know in the pure definition of a family-style restaurant. Um, and I think most families, um, I know when I grew up and probably yourself, uh, didn't have a menu when you went. Your mother didn't have to prepare a menu for you when you went home and say, here, what would you like to eat? So you, you, you ate what, 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 what your mother cooked for you. She and just there, had to be concerned that there were so many of us, and each of us had a different food taste. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> we were all complaining. <laughs> so very, very, very minimal kinds of food, right? 
Uh, because the food at Ad Hoc isn't considered au cuisine, does that mean this cookbook is the most accessible to home cooks? Well, I think so. Certainly, that I, I think um, f- from its format and concept, I think it, it, it is. Um, there, are, there are dishes on there in the in the book that are, that people have reference points to. Um, beef stroganoff, for example, or fried chicken, for example. Um, uh, bread pudding, uh, things like that, that people can say, okay, yeah, yeah I, I, I know a little bit about that. I, I think we take it a little further. Um, we want to make sure that people understand the process. I mean, w- w- no matter what kind of cooking you're doing, it, it, there's a process involved. And, and, and to really enjoy the process is half half of the battle, you know, half of the success of the recipe. And you include photographs that demonstrate how to do things like cut up a chicken, how to tie up a roast, some basic techniques. Uh, can a beginner learn to cook from this book? Uh, well, you know, it's, it's a good question. Can a beginner learn? I think a beginner can learn how to cook from this book, certainly. Do you I, think I, enough people don't know how to do those things? Uh, I... Uh, it's it's hard for me to say. I don't know enough people who cook at home, but I think that I think that there's 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 great value in in the book. Um, some of the light bulb moments we have we have a sections in there that call light bulb moments. You know how to uh, identify how much salt or, or get used to how much salt you're picking up with your fingers. Um, you know putting a, a a damp towel underneath your cutting board so it, it doesn't slip. You know some some really basic stuff so people can really learn how we in in, in professional kitchens. Um, how we organize ourselves, how how we cook. Uh, I think that's a really that's a really important topic. And you even include basics like how to make your own mayonnaise or a roux or a stock or court bouillon or sachet, mm-hmm. pasta dough, things like that. Again, things that most people just simply buy in the store and uh, assume will do just as well. Well, I, you know, I think that the convenience foods, and, and certainly today in the marketplace, are are so many wonderful convenience foods out there. I think that this again, this is this is about the process of cooking and embracing that process and enjoying the process. I think that's that's the most important thing. To make your own pasta dough, do you really need to make your own pasta dough today? No, there's some great pastas that are produced out there, but. Can 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 you can you can you enjoy the process? I think that's the question you want to ask yourself, and and, and be able to make your own pasta dough, find a certain gratification, satisfaction, in the same way that I do when I when I when I do those things.